a lot of people have been talking about the template that he wants Drew Brees mixed with Lamar Jackson. I mean, who doesn't? So in you, what is your interpretation of what Kyle Shanahan said with those words? Uh, this to me was my favorite part of the press conference, because I think as someone who's trying to learn a lot more and just trying to learn on how to watch these players and a bit more and just get better at how I'm able to talk about them. I thought this was the most revealing thing that could, that could teach somebody how to do that. And it's a conversation you and I have had on the phone. Like when we talk about these quarterbacks, because there's so much unknown, it's like, I always ask you this question and I, I still ask this question. How do you know which guy is going to improve on what? And how do you know which one is more improvable than the other thing? Right. You just don't know. And right. when you look at like the top 10 quarterbacks, you can say this. I think they all come in different shapes and sizes and they all do it in different ways. Just because a guy is six foot and can scramble doesn't mean he's the next Russell Wilson. It, there's right. a lot there's a lot more to it. And I think that what he said was the most interesting thing because he said, yeah, you're always looking. OK, you say this guy has an uh, athletic quarterback with a strong arm. How many athletic quarterbacks with strong arms have failed? Paxton Lynch, right? 6'6", six, six, huge arm, athletic, flop. Jake Locker, 6'4", huge arm, pro-style offense, Sark, flop. Like, there's True. a lot more examples of this that just haven't been mentioned because Justin Herbert just succeeded and Josh People Allen just People forget that was Sarkeesian at Washington, head coach. Yeah. Yep. So, so like, there are examples of this, right? And then there's examples of the pocket quarterback failing, Josh Rose and Dwayne Haskins. So what Kyle basically revealed to me is the most interesting thing. He's like, you got to know whether the guy has the ability to be a top five guy. What yeah. his abilities are, you have to understand them. So like what the That's abilities the that make a top five guy, I, I don't think you can say. Like, let, let's look at the it's five hard. guys right now. Patrick Mahomes, right, maybe the most flexible arm we've ever seen with unbelievable arm strength, unbelievable ability to throw um off platform all of that and and then he can process information so fast so tough he's perfect and he's a good decision maker right Aaron which Rodgers, has nothing to do with intelligence right Aaron has Rodgers, nothing quickest, yeah. right Aaron Rodgers like quickest release ever I would say he's different from uh Patrick Mahomes and especially now because he basically doesn't really play off schedule anymore he plays basically from the pocket without setting his feet throwing quicker That's passes true. and playing an RPO offense so yeah. they're different then you yeah. look at um uh, who else is there? Josh Allen, right? Huge, big guy, uh, yep. massive arm, and he plays a different style from these Adam guys. Murray, he's quickness. the best in the run game, right? Yeah. So they're Russell Wilson then is his own quickness. style. So they're yeah. all so different. It's like I think that point is so important, and it's so important to understand. I'm not saying that Mac Jones is. This means that Mac Jones is going to be a top five guy, or this means Trey Lance is going to be a top five guy, or anything like that. I just thought that was super interesting the way he said it. And he yeah. told you something else that I thought was interesting that Breeze would still be a top five guy today. And Breeze at the end of his career was basically a top 10 guy. Uh, Lamar Jackson 15 years ago would be a top five guy still. So I, I thought those things were super interesting because I feel like we, and that black and white, and I'm a big nuance guy. Everybody knows nuance is like my favorite word, but I feel like going through this entire process and really watching every throw of all, like all five of these quarterbacks, because the Niners are going to pick them and all of that. I learned like basically that I, I couldn't tell, like I had this kind of ranking, but you could convince me Trey Lance is better than Justin Fields and Mac Jones, even though I have Mac Jones and Justin Fields ahead of him. And you could also convince me Mac Jones is better than Justin mm -hmm. Fields, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance. And even though I have them ahead of him, because I found that it's not black and white at all. There's so much gray. Each one of these guys has a set of strengths and a set of weaknesses. And I thought that was super interesting because Kyle is looking for the set of strengths that he could turn into a top five guy. What are those right. strengths? We don't know. Right. And the idea is there is no template. You can't, you can't get – it's not like you're picky. It's like There's not enough quarterbacks that are good in the world to begin with. There's no template. What you're just looking for is what I think is the guys with the most natural ability coming out. And the thing that's crazy about quarterback is athleticism is only a fraction of the natural ability you need. Only a fraction. I mean, you need maturity, drive intelligence decision you got you know, all this stuff that like 50 year old ceos need you know what i mean and you're 20 yeah. and you're 20 There's, and you're an athlete yeah and you talk about this natural ability right this natural ability isn't just natural talent there's 20 abilities that you need 20 of them need, and so right? you, you, and, and no one's gonna have all of them but like which one has the most and which ones so it's if that's why the league is so bad at it. we gotta I mean, move on grant grant how Keep many on. people how many people look for the next joe montana like, wasn't Rick Mirror supposed to be the next Joe Montana? How many Jake guys Bummer got drafted to be too high Joe because Montana? Joe Montana existed? Exactly. 
Exactly. Yes. Will Craig says if they get Lance, would they get rid of Jimmy? Big argument has been Lance needs time to develop. Another argument to get Jones. Well, maybe that's why Lynch is saying, you know, Jimmy's looking good because he's pushing Lance theoretically. So I, we had a conversation about this actually in January, the first time we talked about Lance. And I said, even if you draft Lance, get rid of Jimmy. And we haven't really talked about that scenario, be, but I, yeah. I still am sticking. I'm still sticking with that. I'm cool with Just that. Start too. Lance because Lance, Lance has already not played one year. You don't want to sit him again. Lance. And then the other thing is, Lance is really good in the short game. That's actually his biggest strength, and that's what all you do with Jimmy. And then you add right. the element of the run game. Yeah, absolutely, play Lance. Uh, David W says double jeopardy in 21 rookie quarterback plus injury prone vets. Dolphins may be smiling with those two top 10 picks. Don't discount that possibility. The Dolphins think they won this trade and things could get very good for them if things if the Niners have another injury played season uh, rookie quarterback. Dave, that's a really good point. I mean, we don't want to predict and, pre and, and expect the worst, but you have to at least be cognizant that it's a possibility. Good point. Um, quickly, dude, they, when they come in, they come in fast. Mike says trade sit, trade Cincy at five and get their 38th as well. Take their quarterback. Oh. Then trade 36 and 30, 43rd Raiders to get great corner. He wants Joe Burrow. You think the Niners can get Joe Burrow? I think he meant take the quarterback there. Oh, it's at, at there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But but uh, I sure. don't since he I've not since he has never traded in my life. If I remember, mm. they just stand there and take the BPA. So I don't I don't think Cincinnati trade. even has a scouting department. I think they just don't have one. I don't know what that's about. Uh Peyton Wisdom says McGlinchey in the third for Julio Jones. I should be a GM. This stuff is so easy. Yeah, boom. Lock it in. McGlinchey and a third for Julio. Easy. Maybe maybe just McGlinchey for, for Julio. Uh, Pink Trip says, if no Jimmy due to injury or trade and we have to go with one of other quarterbacks or the rookie, what will our record be, Grant? Prediction, please. Uh, I think a rookie could do just as well as Jimmy. I think Josh Rosen could do just as well as Jimmy. I'm 10 wins. Ten uh, wins with Trey Lance. Ten wins with Mac Jones. Ten wins yeah, with Jimmy. Ten, ten wins. wins ten wins. Yeah. yeah ten wins. Trey with Justin Lance, Fields. To me, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, Justin Fields are all capable in different ways of getting the 49ers to ten wins next year. If one of them gets hurt and it's like Josh Rosen and Sudfield, then yeah, well, you guys might want to start scouting the best second round prospect in next year's draft. Don't you start taking shots at Josh Rosen on my channel, sir. Josh Lewis says all the quarterbacks in our division either are better passers or more athletic than Jimmy G. They have to upgrade. Yeah, well, they're on the they're in the process. I mean, mm. Mac Jones. Uh, oh, 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 that's five dollars. Thank you, thank you. Um, did we did we hit them all? No, there's a few more. Hold on, there's a couple more. All right. Oh, Sebastian Victor. has another question. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. Hold on. Hold on. Victor says, why wouldn't Kyle want someone, Justin Fields, who he's known for years, especially because of the pandemic restrictions? Maybe the fact that he knows him so well is part of the reason. Does he know him or did they, were they at the same camp? For Good point. 